Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. So today I've been chopping up some samples in Koala and I was about to throw them into the SP to finish up the beat and add some live instruments. And I thought, why am I not filming this? Because it's been a minute since I've done a sample or even just Dawless workflow video. And my workflow has changed quite a bit and I wanna show you what I'm doing right now and then we'll get into making a full beat. If you are interested in getting any of the gear I use in today's video, I have affiliate links in the description. So let's check out these Chops. All right, so here's the samples that I'm working with. I've got this chill, kind of bassy piano vibe. And then I've got this beat, which is real sloppy. I really like that. And then some sax. Now, I don't think right now these are in the same key, but we'll get those in key with pitching and chopping. So for chopping, the reason why I like Koala for this is it's a lot more visual and just more tactile almost, just moving these things rather than doing little knob tweaks on the SP. So what I do is I just copy the sound to a few different ones and then I just find a sample I like, let's say. And then I just start trying to This needs to be a lot slower. Two, two. That's the basic way of just chopping up. I start getting a vibe if I'm using a drum beat, because sometimes I use my own drums. Or another thing that I might do is make a couple of chops from these drums. Like here we've got a kick and a hi hat. Let's move this one and get that right there. So it's a different vibe, but you can chop up these different things. A lot of great sampling artists do that sort of thing. But today, I really liked this drum beat as it was. So we're just gonna chop up these bits, find some different parts. You can also, if you'd rather just chop it up easily, you could just go to auto chop in the settings and you can do transients, which would be the level setting. And when it finds a sound that goes above that level, that's a transient, like the spike, it notices that and you can chop it up. Or you could go to equal and create any number of samples. So. And all of this stuff is on the SP, you could do it that way. I just weirdly, when it comes to sample chopping, like having that visual to just find it and move it with my fingers rather than with the knobs. That's why I use Koala here. So I'm gonna chop up these samples and I'll skip all that cause it takes a while and then we'll see what we get. Okay, so from this original piano and bassy chop, I pitched it up a bit by I think, yeah, four semitones. And then I just made a couple of different chops. And then I also chopped up the saxophone a bit and pitched it down. But I'm not gonna use most of them, so I only pitched down a couple, and then a few of them seem to fit at their original pitch. All right, so let me show you the sequences I made already using just a couple of these parts, and I think we're gonna make like a bassier section. So we've got this main one. And then I added some horns. So first of all, we already got some bass, but I wanna get a bass line from that main piano part. So what I'm gonna do is, I already have some effects on here, but I'm gonna add compression and some filter. And then I'm going to hit resample loop. And then we'll just go to EQ with the Samurai update. They've added an EQ now. So it just adds a little more bass on top of that sound. So let's hear what it sounds like. So I'm gonna add that, make a couple more sequences, and then we'll be good to move it into the SP. All right, so here's the final few sequences. So here's just the drums and the bass. And then we've got that original section with the bass added, these horns. All right, so there's a few ways to move this into the SP. First, we're obviously gonna need an empty bank, so I'm gonna do bank D on, I don't even know what project this is, 15. So there we go. The first is probably what I'm gonna do, where you just record each of these patterns as they are with the drums and all that stuff onto individual pads, and then you can either pad link them, so when one's playing, if you hit another, it stops the previous one playing, or you could just make multiple sequences using just a single pad. Whatever you prefer works when you're using this method. I've done both before, the patterns are a 
little cleaner because they have a defined start and end point. And when you switch, it switches on time rather than if you switch a little early or later, it just goes right to it when you're doing the pads. But doing it the pad way is kind of the more old school, to my knowledge of SPs, the more old school SP method. But the other thing you could do is you could make multiple loops of just each part from each pattern. So let's say you have this one that's just the bass and the drums, right? You could record just the bass into the SP as one just the drums as another pad on the SP and then within the patterns on the SP you can put them together this would give you much more flexibility in terms of effects and things like that per pad but I'm pretty happy with how it all sounds so I think I'm just gonna throw it in the original way but we'll pattern sequence it just so it's a little more on sync the third way and it's one I don't really ever do is you could export all of the sequences or all of the samples as audio files and then put those audio files into the SD card of the SP or put them directly onto pads using the SP app on your computer. It's a little more time consuming, let's say, but it is probably the best method in terms of sound quality and control and things like that. But there's one thing that I really like to do with the SP when I'm bouncing these in. And one of the main reasons why I like to record them in rather than put them in on an SD card or through the SP app. And so that's having these master effects bus three and four always on so that when I sample it into the SP, the audio will get hit with this mastering chain, which is for me typically cassette sim and compressor. Then when I play the pad, it's getting hit with a second dose of the cassette sim and compressor because when it's recorded, it has one baked into the audio, let's say, and then it's still set as the master effect. So you get it twice. And that really fattens up the sound and thickens everything up. It's one of my favorite tricks. So let's do that real quick. So I'm gonna just figure out the kind of setting that I want for this sound. And first, I really want to get some effects on Koala. So I think we'll put a little pressure on it. We don't need compressor. Just a little dirty. And some vibro flange, I think. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, and then one other thing we're gonna do is run bus one into bus two, and I'm just gonna check input bus. I want it to be bus one, because we're now gonna have five different effects on this audio. So input effect, I have 303 sim, which is adding some compression. I like a lot of compression going through these samples because we're going to also add other instruments and so it just kind of blends it all together and stuff. I've got a pretty good amount of wow and flutter. No noise though. I, I do the noise usually after, but we'll see if we want 404. Now cassette sim. I don't know if we want that much dirt. We're going to add a little dirt. I don't want any cat. A little less wow and flutter. Let's put some age on it too. And then bus four, we usually keep this static at zero, zero, zero and 69 on the level. Now, we got bus one. Maybe we do a little isolator. I'm just doing some kind of EQ to get everything where I want it as it goes in. I think we're gonna do just a little noise on 404. I really like that sound. Now, of course, once you pause it, there's that. You get that first one in. Uh, that's the one issue when you use noise, you can't set the count into weight. So I think we'll shut off noise for now and let's try something else. I think that's what we'll do. We'll add a little reverb. That should give us the ability to use the weight for recording. So we'll just set this to one. We're gonna do the bass. That should do it. And then we'll just test that. Here I was getting hit with that compression and cassette sim again. It's massive sounding. And we just need to go to the end point. Okay, I left some space at the end so it would hopefully make it easy to know when to take it off. And I kept that first hit of the beat. So hopefully, let's see. Let's see if we loop it. 
That should work. And since we're gonna pattern sequence it, it doesn't matter anyways, but I'll just leave it as chopped but not truncated just in case. All right, now something else I want to add though. Ooh, this is a cool little chop. I'm actually gonna put this in on its own. Think we can make a little 16 level vibe off of that. So let's see what else we got. I wanna see something. Let's see if we can auto chop or not auto chop, split this stem, take out the bass and all that and see if we can get, I wanna see if we can get that little percussion sound. Yeah, we might be able to. I mean, it's not exactly what I had hoped, but let's sample those in. Yeah, I actually really like, it just adds a little something else and changes that drum vibe a little bit. We've already got some nice percussion in those drums. Now, the one other thing that I'd like to get is something where like the drum is dropped out for at least a bar. I'm thinking we'll do this one minus a drum there and this one minus a drum. So this will just give us a little variation to do some drum dropouts. So let's just get Isolator back on and the reverb. And since this is a variation of one, we'll put it on five. There we go. And then now we got this variation of two, so we'll put that there. Yeah, I like that. All right, now, I think we're done with Koala, and I, I think we may want to add some synth sounds or maybe guitar. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to pattern these out. I'm going to stop the cameras while I pattern. So basically, just what I'm going to do for the pattern sequence, I go to D, and I'm going to set... Looks like it's already set. No, it's not. I'm going to set the pattern to 96, and then when I record, I'm just going to hit one. Set it to four bars, because that's what we were working with with these loops, not 14. And I'm gonna quantize it 100% on quarter notes. You can even probably do bar, and we're just gonna put it in. So I'm gonna do that for all of these, and we'll be good to go. Okay, so I got the guitar in, and I actually got some synth parts in before I realized that I forgot to hit record in my DAW to get the audio. So I've got this synth from the Prophet. And then I also have this really cool swell that I added SX reverb and some cloud delay to. So I can do that, which I'm thinking in like the transitions. When it comes in right. So it's just kind of embellishment. Sometimes when I do a sample flip, I wanna add a lot more of me. Sometimes I wanna just kind of embellish on what I did with the samples I chopped. And this sample chop, or sample flip I should say, already has a lot of different parts. There's already three different samples spliced together. So I didn't wanna to add too much. You've already got some piano, drums, bass, and things like that. I just wanted to add some light embellishment. So yeah, that's my current workflow when it comes to sample flips and dollis music making. And it's a ton of fun to work with. But I'm curious to hear, what's your current workflow? Let me know in the comments. And if you wanna see how I perform these tracks on two samplers, check out this video next. Thanks for watching. Thank you.